Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Islet Speaking Part 1. The topic of our lesson is hotels. Hotels. In this lesson, we are going to look at some questions and some sample answers. I'm also going to give you some tips to help you score a very high band in your eyelids speaking test. Now, before we begin the lesson, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and share the video with somebody else who may benefit from it. Thank you. Now, let's begin with question one. Have you stayed in a hotel before? Have you stayed in a hotel before? Now, in this question, the examiner wants to know whether you have ever stayed in a hotel. Now, to answer this question, you can say, I have stayed in hotels a couple of times in the past, especially when I worked as a salesman. I have stayed in hotels a couple of times in the past, especially when I worked as a salesman. So, in that answer, I have told the examiner that actually I have stayed in hotels before. In fact, I have stayed in hotels a couple of times. A couple of times means a number of times, and that is in the past, especially when I worked as a salesman. Question two, why do people stay in hotels? Why do people stay in hotels? In that question, the examiner wants you to give him or her some reasons as to why people choose to stay in hotels. Now, to answer that question, you can say, people stay in hotels when they travel away from home for work or whilst on holiday. People stay in hotels when they travel away from home for work or whilst on holiday. So in that answer, I have given the examiner uh, some reasons as to why people stay in hotels. And that is when they travel away from home, either for work or whilst on holiday. Now, whilst simply means while. Remember, we are aiming for a band 9 in this uh, test. So we have to try and use advanced vocabulary. So whilst means while. So people stay in hotels when they travel away from home for work or whilst on holiday. Let's move on to question 3. What kinds of hotels do you like? What kinds of hotels do you like? In that question, the examiner wants you to identify the types of hotels you like. What types of hotels do you like? Now, you can answer that question by saying, My favorite hotels are those that are close to the beach with a sea view. They must have a good gym, a big swimming pool, and friendly staff. My favorite hotels are those that are close to the beach with a sea view. They must have a good gym, a big swimming pool, and friendly staff. So, in that answer, I have identified to the examiner what kind of hotels I like. I like hotels that are close to the beach with a sea view. I also like hotels that have a good gym, a big swimming pool, and friendly staff. Now, let's move on to question four. 
What facilities make a hotel stay good? What facilities make a hotel stay good? In that question, the examiner wants you to uh, tell him or her what facilities, what things make a hotel good when you stay there. Now you can answer that question by saying, there are numerous facilities which make a hotel good, for instance, hospitable staff, good housekeeping to ensure that the hotel is spin and spark, as well as delicious meals and entertainment. There are numerous facilities which make a hotel good, for instance, hospitable staff, good housekeeping to ensure that the hotel is spin and spark, as well as delicious meals and entertainment. So in that answer, I have identified all the facilities, okay, all the facilities that I think are very important to ensure that you enjoy your stay when you go to a hotel. For instance, hospitable staff. Hospitable staff. Hospitable means friendly. Good housekeeping. That is the people who clean the rooms, who clean the, uh, uh, the different uh, uh, rooms, and they change the beddings, they give you new um, bed sheets. And, okay, good housekeeping to ensure that the hotel is spin and spark. Now, spin and spark is an expression in English which means sparkling clean, very clean. Spin and spark, as well as delicious meals. A good uh, hotel serves delicious meals and entertainment. So there are numerous facilities which make a hotel good, for instance, hospitable staff, good housekeeping to ensure that the hotel is spin and spark, as well as delicious meals and entertainment. Question 5. Do you think hospitality of the staff is important? Do you think hospitality of the staff is important? So in that question, the examiner wants you to give him or her your opinion. Do you think hospitality of the people who work in the hotel is important? Do you think that um, how hospitable the staff is? Hospitable means warm and friendly. Do you think that is important? Now you can answer that question by saying, absolutely. Hospitality can make or break a hotel because guests will not return if the staff are rude and unwelcoming. They should make guests feel at home. Absolutely. Hospitality can make or break a hotel because guests will not return if the staff are rude and unwelcoming. They should make guests feel at home. Now, in that answer, I have expressed my opinion. I began with the word absolutely. Do I think hospitality of the staff is important? Absolutely. So, absolutely here means, yes, I think it's very important. And then I went further to explain why. Because hospitality, it can make or break a hotel. Because guests will not return if the staff are rude and unwelcoming. They should make guests feel at home. The staff should make guests feel at home. Now let's move on to question six. What makes a hotel bad? What makes a hotel bad? In that question, the examiner wants you to identify what things make a hotel a bad hotel. Now you can answer that question by saying, well, a bad hotel tends to be dirty, 
poorly maintained and the food is often tasteless and lacks variety. Besides that, the staff are obnoxious and incompetent. Well, a bad hotel tends to be dirty, poorly maintained and the food is often tasteless and lacks variety. Besides that, the staff are obnoxious and incompetent. So in that answer, I have identified several qualities of a bad hotel. The things that you would see in a bad hotel. Dirty. Dirty means it's not clean. It's poorly maintained. Maybe some of the tables are, you know, um, chipped. Uh, the beds, you know, are sagging when you sleep on them. Some of the rooms don't have the lights. The lights are not working properly. That means they are poorly. The hotel is is pure is is poorly maintained. Now the food is often tasteless. The food has no taste. It is tasteless. Okay. And the food lacks variety, meaning that they serve the same food every single time. Besides that, the staff are obnoxious. Obnoxious means rude. And also, the staff are incompetent. Incompetent means that they are not well trained. So what makes a, a hotel bad? Well, a bad hotel tends to be dirty poorly maintained and the food is often tasteless and lacks variety. Besides that, the staff are obnoxious and incompetent. Now, this brings me to the second section of this lesson where I'm going to give you a few tips to help you score a high band. Tip number one, make sure you understand the question that the examiner is asking you. Listen very carefully for the verbs. Have you stayed in a hotel before? So the question has to do with staying. Have you stayed? Make sure you understand the question very well, very clearly. Okay. Tip number two. For each of the questions that the examiner asks you, give two or three ideas. Don't simply say yes or no. Tip number three. Join your ideas together using linking words. For example, in my sample answers, I have used a number of linking words. Now, the next tip is make sure you use the correct vocabulary for the topic that you're talking about. In this topic, we are talking about hotels. In my sample answers, I have used a lot of vocabulary that is related to hotels. The next tip is if you're aiming for a band 8 or a band 9, make sure you use complex sentences and compound sentences in your answers. A compound sentence has two verbs. A complex sentence has two or more verbs, which means that a compound sentence has one linking word. A complex sentence has two or more linking words. Now, the next tip and the most important is that make sure you, 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 you use the correct grammar when you're giving your answers. In fact, that is what is going to determine the band that you're going to get. So use good grammar. Make sure you have good subject verb agreement. Use the correct uh, uh, prepositions, okay? And finally, make sure that you speak fluently. Now, speaking fluently does not mean that you speak English without an accent. No, it just means that when you speak English, the examiner is able to understand you. And how do you improve your fluency? Through practice. For example, read these questions and read the sample answers aloud. Practice, practice, practice. Because practice makes perfect. Now, this brings me to the last section of this lesson. I'm going to read for you the questions and the sample answers. Are you ready? Question one, have you stayed in a hotel before? I have stayed in hotels a couple of times in the past, especially 
when I worked as a salesman. Question 2. Why do people stay in hotels? People stay in hotels when they travel away from home for work or whilst on holiday. Question 3. What kinds of hotels do you like? My favourite hotels are those that are close to the beach with a sea view. They must have a good gym, a big swimming pool and friendly staff. Question 4. What facilities make a hotel, a hotel stay good? There are numerous facilities which make a hotel good, for instance, hospitable staff, good housekeeping to ensure that the hotel is spin and spark, as well as delicious meals and entertainment. Question 5. Do you think hospitality of the staff is important? Absolutely. Hospitality can make or break a hotel because guests will not return if the staff are rude and unwelcoming. They should make guests feel at home. Question 6. What makes a hotel bad? Well, a bad hotel tends to be dirty, poorly maintained and the food is often tasteless and lacks variety. Besides that, the staff are obnoxious and incompetent. So there you go. That's how you're supposed to answer these questions. You can use the sample answers to adapt them into your answers. Now, if you found this video helpful, kindly give the video a thumbs up. Share the video with other people. Help other people to benefit from this uh, video by sharing. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn your notification bell on so that you know when I upload another useful video. Now, thank you very much, everyone, and I shall see you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.